Well, I just turned on record, okay. so I you are. Officially started. <laughs> it's official now. But anyway, so this particular class is called Applied Safety Engineering. We use the National Safety Council's um, technology book, all right, uh, in the fall, and we do an Applied Safety Engineering class, and then we follow that up in the spring with the second half of the book, Machine and Material Safety. So my thought on this is that, uh, you know, by the, by the time they're juniors and seniors, they've probably already written term papers, and they're sick and tired of writing term papers, and also at this point, I wanted to actually start doing some of the safety stuff, so applying some of it. So I came up with this project. I've gotten really good feedback from the students. They, they get excited. They have a lot of fun doing it. Um, some of the, the rules that I have on setting up, because I do have a mixture of students. Some of them are traditional students. Others are non-traditional. They have jobs. They have families. So I don't force them to work as a group. All right, on, these, on this project, they can choose to either work by themselves or they can form a group of people, but I limit the group to three. Because I, what I've seen over the years, I've been teaching there now for 16 years, um, is that if the group gets too large, we have some social loafing and it ends up one or two people doing all of the work, so no more than three people to the, to the group. So this is the project we've been, been doing. A um, little overview how I go about doing this. So these are a little bit wordy, but the instructions are that each student is expected to, to participate. I mean, there's a, a grade, all right? And it's a grade out of 100, so it's like a test grade, so it's a, a major project for them. Um, the objectives that I had in setting this up, their ability to recognize safety hazards in everyday operations. I mean, they come to classes, they listen to the lectures, they hear all of this stuff, but can you take that and actually go out into the, to the workplace or the job site and know what it is when you see it? Okay, so that's the first objective. I want them to develop their skills and technology. They're pretty good with you know, Facebook and their phones and things, but can you take all of that and pull it together into something that you can deliver to other people like you do with them in their training class? Um, their public speaking and presentation skills, you know they're scared to death. To, to get up, but we all know that the more you do it, the easier it gets. Yeah, so I want to expose them to that. All right, and I want them to be able to articulate and explain their position. I think everyone has been there where you recognize a hazard, you cite the hazard, you share it with with management, and they say, "No, it's not." And so you've got to figure out, all right, how am I going to convince them that you have to do this? All right, so I want them to, to start working on that, all right? And as part of that, they need to be able to research the appropriate governing documentation, because depending upon what you're looking at, it's not always going to be OSHA. Maybe it's a PIOSH standard. Maybe it's a DOT standard. So I want them to start getting familiar with all of those resources. So that's, that's their job, if you, if you will, what I want them to accomplish. So they get to choose their, their subject area, all right? Because I, be, I believe in ownership. I think you get more buy-in when there's more ownership. So if I assign them an, an area, uh, they're probably not gonna be as happy about that as if they get to choose it themselves. And you'll see in a minute why it also kind of works out well if they choose it, all right? Um, here are some of the examples, all right? Construction hazards, it could be a hospital situation. It might be several businesses but you're looking at ergonomic hazards. You're gonna focus on those, okay? And then they do have to approve their area. Mostly the approval is just to make sure that they don't get themselves into to trouble picking something that would be very dangerous for a novice, all right? All right, so then what they're going to do after that's approved, they can use their phone camera, digital camera, whatever they've got, all right? They have to actually go and do an audit, do an inspection in the area that they've chosen and take photographs. And then I want them to take those photographs, all right, and put them into a PowerPoint presentation. So this is part of the reason why letting them choose a subject area works well. Many of them have a relative who works at the steel mill, or a relative who's got a construction business or a grocery store, or maybe they would like to have their daycare center audited, all right? So they can pick that, that subject area, and that way they've also got access to it. Okay. Um, sometimes they have a little bit of a problem. I've had them do Walmart before, Reesers, uh, other business establishments, and that's the first question for the, the establishment. Wait a minute, am I going to be liable for this? 
you know. And so we've had to work with them and say, look, you know, the student doesn't have to say where they're at. They don't have to give the name of the business. And if you like, they will give you the final product or even come to your facility and present it. Really, they'll do that. So they will if they want extra credit. Okay. So, you know, so that usually eases their, you know, their hesitation and the students are able to, to go in and do that. Okay. Um, so they got to go out and look for the hazards. All right. And it is kind of their first experience with actually doing a safety audit and then documenting what their findings were. Okay. So I have large classes like you guys do. All right. And so I have them limit, you know, their number of pictures to 10. Okay, and they've got to be original photographs. I don't want to see anything downloaded from the internet. All right, I want you to go take it because that's a big part of this project is you getting the experience. Okay, all right. So um, they can they can use the may not use the same photo more than once, um, even if it's got more than one thing wrong showing in the photo. But when they put it up for their presentation. They talk about one thing. If I or a student in the classroom sees other things, they should be prepared to talk about those other things. Because that's what would happen to us in an industrial situation. If we were making a presentation and we said, I went out, I inspected the job site, this is what I found. If you talk about one hazard and you completely ignore the other, you're going to get some questions. So be prepared for those questions. Okay. So you want a photo of the what's wrong, a description, short description. What are your governing references, whether it's OSHA, DOT, EPA, okay, uh, and a recommended corrective action, all right? Now, I prefer all that material to be on the slide, uh, but if they want to discuss it instead because the slide's getting too, too complicated, then that's fine as long as it's covered, okay? So, now, I have them draw numbers, okay? I just put a bunch of numbers in a hat, and then I have each person or a person, you know, spokesperson from that group uh, draw a number out of the hat, that's the order they go in. Unless they're like, no, I just want to get it over with. Who's got number one? I'll trade with you. Mm -hmm. I let them. And then, you know, I write down a list and say, all right, now we know the order that the presentations are going to take place in. Um, when I grade these, okay, the quality of the photo, the overall presentation, all right, what is, you know, is it an easy to read? Because as you know, there are good ways and bad ways. Like this is a bad way. I have lots and lots of text on every slide, which is not normally something I would do, um, but it worked for putting this together real quick, okay? Um, their articulation, are they up there mumbling and you know, shuffling their feet, and looking down, so that's part of the grade. Their personal appearance, you know, if it's professional or not. Um, do they really know about their subject? All right, you know, and you can usually tell with a couple of, couple of good questions. Anyway, they give me a copy of their presentation on disk at the end of, end of the, the task. I really like these. And this is the sneaky professor part. I get so many good pictures. And I can use those pictures for other types of training. Okay, so I've got, I'm just going to call them minions. All right, minions out there taking pictures that will add to the safety program eventually. So yeah, that's why I asked for those. And I think you should too if you're going to do the project. Okay. Um, so this is all treated when they're doing their presentation as if they're presenting the results to the CEO of the company, all right, who is kind of disgruntled and, you know, ag gets agitated, and all the department chairs, those are the other, other students in the classroom. So expect them to, to dress appropriately and prepare for people to argue with them. So I make a little rubric for grading it because obviously this goes pretty fast, especially with two or three presenters up there. So I have a form like this filled out ahead of time. So I've got room for up to three team members. And then I've got my evaluation area. I do share this with the students ahead of time. So they know exactly what I'm going to be looking at. Okay. So their length of presentation, right about 10 minutes. All right. Their personal appearance is five points. Articulation is 10. Audience interaction, meaning eye contact and things like that, 10 points. Subject expertise and presentation materials, 25. Giving me the electronic copy is 15. And this last five, did you bring me donuts? <laughs> All right. So, that's, well, that's actually, you know, if they make some handouts or they do other things that, you know, aren't required as part of the project, <laughs> then they can get that extra five points. Okay. So, some ideas for topics. Um, 
And you know, this is kind of nice, and students actually started doing this. This wasn't you know, something I had thought of when I came up with the, the project. Um, but a lot of these can be addressed either from the employee safety perspective or from the consumer or customer perspective. And so they will tailor theirs. And are you doing a customer safety? All right, or are you doing an employee safety one? All right, so I thought that was interesting. Um, oil and gas operations have gotten some good stuff from that. Grocery stores, the, the nightclubs in Tahlequah don't go there. All right, <laughs> yeah, exit doors locked. I mean, just all sorts of, of bad things there. Okay, um, they've done our events, our uh, event venues at Northeastern. Uh, and then shared their results with the coaches, and that actually did result in some changes being made. So that was that was kind of nice. Uh, and you can see other areas that they've they've chosen. This is not a comprehensive list, but I think it does show that pretty much anything is fair game for this. Okay. All right. So these are some a couple of student examples, and I just took one slide. So this one was. Um, oil and gas operation, so they have a CFR citation, and they describe what the problem is, give the solution, so short and, short and sweet. Yeah. Um, this one, I think, was the athletic facility. What did that go to? I think it's out at the, where they have the inflatable dome and the, the running track and stuff out there. I think that's where they found that. And it goes down. We have a lot of uh, tunnels underneath the uh, NSU campus. It's a drain. Oh, yeah, okay. it's a drain. Okay. Yeah, on a, on a surface. So it's an open hole in the, the okay. surface. Yeah, but we do. We have tunnels underneath there. I found out that our building, yeah, it has a whole other base where you go down this medieval stone steps and, you know, and then there's this big dark opening with cobwebs. Tall enough to walk through. Time out room. Yeah, <laughs> it's some, it's some scary, yeah. scary Sorry stuff. The yeah. The so. water steam the water, I guess. Keeps the sidewalk from having to be shoveled. Yeah. That's true. All right, and so these, for some reason, the um, there we go. Yeah, they get creative too with their their slides. So here you can see they've they've cir uh, circled the, the what the think the problem is. Another oil and gas one, ladder one. So I think this one was part of a residential construction one. So I don't know if you can quite see the, the duct taping that's holding on the, the ladder one. So there you go. See, nothing to be intimidated by. It was a fun applied project for the, <laughs> for the students. Kate, Katie, this, this obviously is an engaging project with respect to student learning uh, student engagement, that sort of thing. What differences do you see uh, in in the outcomes, or or even the process that the students experience with this, compared with say studying all of this in a book and taking a test score? Ah, uh, the complaint, if you will, that I get from the students by the end of the semester is, you know what? I cannot go anywhere now without immediately looking around for my exit and finding safety hazards. They say, there's this little Ellis voice in my head now, you know, that says, oh, look here, look there. So I think that it, I think it opens their eyes. I think it opens their eyes. I think it also gives them confidence that, yeah, this is something they can do. You know, because up to this point, they've been reading all about it, um, but they've not actually done it. So it's that first toes in the water. Hey, I got this. I can do this. Yes, Clay. Do you limit their PowerPoint presentations to a certain amount of slides, or? Well, they're limited to ten photographs. So usually that's it's ten slides, and I try to, to keep the presentations to about ten minutes because with close to fifty students and sometimes more in the classroom, some of them doing it individually, some with groups of three it can be very time consuming. But I reserve the last couple of weeks of the semester uh, for these presentations for a couple of reasons. One, we've covered enough material in the, the books that they actually know something about what they're looking for and where to find their references and things. Um, the other reason is, is by then, everyone's got a kind of a general understanding. They've read about stuff, now they can see it. And I do think that that helps with my learners who are more visual versus tactile is that, you know, because 
yeah, it's Oklahoma, but some people grew up in Jinx or, or Tulsa and they've never been on a farm, they've never been to an oil rig. Yeah, they've been to Walmart, but they were there, you know, to, I don't know, get groceries or something. They weren't there looking for the number of exits and whether or not they're blocked and things like that. So, questions? All right.